After a dominant performance last week against Rangers in the Champions League, Liverpool could not get back-to-back -back wins after they were beaten by Arsenal at the Emirates. There is a lot of things to discuss from that game as we go through the 5 things we learned from Arsenal 3, Liverpool 2. And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys. Before we get into today's video, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. After a change in formation reaped a positive result midweek, Jurgen Klopp stuck to the formula against an in-form Arsenal, but did not prove as successful in the capital. Within just 57 seconds, the ball was in Alisson's net, as the Reds' proficiency for conceding first continued, with Gabriel Martinelli finishing after just four Arsenal passes. That's 10 of the last 12 games that Liverpool have conceded first. The pressure was piled on Klopp's side, with the threat of being exposed on the counter, a real one, as the flanks were left exposed for Arsenal's forwards and midfield to run into. But the lion's share of possession soon came Liverpool's way to help find their feet in the contest, calming the nerves, creating chances and turning into the side asking the questions. Darwin Nunes soon capitalised, latching onto Luis Diaz's pass across the box with a tidy sliding finish as the Reds played behind the Gunners' defence for 1-1. A knee injury to Diaz forced him off before the break, Roberto Firmino was his replacement and at a time when Liverpool had to be aware of the clock and stay disciplined. They let Arsenal slice through them from their own offensive free kick. Saka converted at the back post in the final seconds of the half, but the Reds were not without their chances to stop the play in infancy. The second half started with Joe Gomez replacing Trent Alexander-Arnold, who rolled his ankle earlier in the game, taking the casualty list to 2 in 45 minutes. In a reversal to the end of the first half, an Arsenal side in control were hit by a Liverpool counterpunch, Firmino finishing after a delightful Diogo Jota pass to level the scores. Klopp's side continued to toe the line of danger at the back, though in Klopp turned to Canate and Fabinho to force Henderson to shift to the right of the midfield. Just seven minutes and some chaotic defending in the box later, Saka converted from the spot after Michael Oliver dished out a soft penalty. The result moves Arsenal back to the top of the table and keeps Liverpool on a lowly 10 points after eight games. These are the five things we have learned from the match. Nunes turns corner. Before kickoff, off marquee summer signing, Darwin Nunes was still waiting for his Liverpool career to get out of second gear. Having previously looked cumbersome and unpredictable in the worst way, the Uruguayan was razor sharp in a tough assignment against the Gunners and an informed centre-back, William Saliba. Nunes' movement caused problems in the first half as he was consistently found in the channels and while his accurate cross for Luis Diaz didn't result in a goal, he was rewarded before the interval with an easy tap-in. Now after his goal against Arsenal, it is important for him to kick on from here now that he's playing more consistently. Trent fails to silence critics. Although Martinelli's searing pace was a key factor in Arsenal's early hammer blow, Trent Alexander-Arnold was asleep to the danger. Unaware of events behind him, the much-criticised Liverpool right-back was nowhere to be seen when the Brazilian raced in behind to leave Klopp scratching his head. Alexander-Arnold's defensive capabilities, or apparent lack thereof, remain in the spotlight with England boss Gareth Southgate clearly among those unconvinced. Ultimately, the 24-year-old was unable to turn things around, as a nasty-looking ankle injury saw him replaced by Joe Gomez at half-time. More injuries Whilst the result was a hard one to take, Liverpool are going to be without Trent Alexander-Arnold and Luis Diaz, as they both picked up injuries within the match. Jurgen Klopp confirmed that both of the injuries did not look good, saying, Trent is injured unfortunately. Like Luis Diaz as well, it doesn't look good for them both. That is the icing on the cake, he added with sarcasm. Diaz was seen leaving the stadium on crutches and with a brace on his knee. To say it's a blow would be an understatement, just as Liverpool's injury fortunes look to be taking an upward turn. Both Alexander-Arnold and Diaz have featured in every game for the Reds so far this season, both sitting in the top five for the most minutes played. Confidence is creeping away. Virgil van Dijk after the game came out and said that Liverpool players' confidence has taken a real knock and says it's on the players to work hard and regain their incredible form they've shown under Klopp. He said confidence is definitely a thing that plays a part. We're all human beings. Sometimes you need a bit of confidence in certain moments. If it's not as high, it won't help in certain situations. 
Every human being needs confidence to perform at the highest level. If you're not winning, confidence is creeping away. We know we can turn it around, but we have to work hard. That's the only thing to do and the only way forward as well. The title race is over. Whilst we are only in October, I think it's fair to say now that the title race is over for Liverpool, who are currently 10th in the table, a staggering 14 points behind Arsenal, who are leading the pack. The Reds are only won two games out of eight so far in the Premier League, and after last night's game, Klopp admitted that his side aren't in the title race. He said, we're not in the title race. It's naive to sit here and think that we are nearly there. We have problems at the moment, but of course, they are a team in form. The leader of the table, we had massive problems today. I think even in a really bad situation for us with the early changes and things like this, there are real problems that is the truth for us. Klopp made some interesting substitutions against Arsenal, not least the decision to withdraw Mohamed Salah for Fabinho, with Jordan Henderson moving to the right side of the midfield. At the very end of his press conference, much to his dismay, Klopp was asked to explain that decision. He said, we had to defend again on a high level, and we tried to put Hendo on the side there. Mo did an unbelievable workload, put in a real shift, and sometimes it's very intense. So that's why we thought we can do it with Hendo. We wanted to win still, even when we took the striker off. Salah didn't look all too pleased, but he is one of a number of players that just aren't hitting the levels of recent seasons. Finally, the FA have also confirmed that they are investigating an incident towards the end of the match on Sunday between Jurgen Klopp and Mikel Arteta. They said, We are aware of the incident that took place during the match between Arsenal and Liverpool. We are in dialogue with the match officials and we will review the details of that incident. The next game for Liverpool now is on Wednesday night against Glasgow Rangers in the Champions League, who are just off the back of a 4-0 win at home to St Mirren. Whilst Liverpool did win convincingly last week, I do believe it will be a different match at Ibrox, a stadium that has seen the Scottish side beat a handful of European giants over the last 12 months. However, it is going to get even more worrying as Liverpool take on Manchester City at the weekend in the next Premier League game, which at the moment, the Reds look miles off the free-scoring City, just two months after beating them in the Community Shield. Liverpool fans, what did you make of yesterday's performance against Arsenal? And in your opinion, what is the problem at the club? Let me know down there in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video. Please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. We've also released our Jurgen Klopp LFC t-shirts. They're now available on our website. Just go down into the link in the description or go to copbyclothing.com. Thank you and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.